Hey guys, in this cool video I'm going to talk about the three different types of traction that you have on dirt bike tires. In case you didn't know it, in motocross and enduro it's the only sport where there are three fundamentally different types of traction you can talk about uh, for three different types of terrain. So as you've probably heard about this medium hard terrain, hard terrain and soft terrain. And it's actually three different mechanisms that the tire utilizes to create traction in these three different types of conditions. Okay, and in case you don't know it, I've actually studied nanoscience, which is um, one of the most complex sciences where we both have biology, physics, chemistry and mathematics. So Talking about this stuff is quite fun and really easy for me to go through. And for that reason, I also thought we should do a little scientific measurement of two different tires um, to see if we actually get what we pay for with these tires. We're going to choose a Dunlop tire and an IRC tire. Um, and then we're going to compare the numbers uh, also with the theory of the different types of traction to see what we get. Now let's get started talking about the three different types of traction. Maybe it will help you also to make better choices with your tire choices in the future. Okay, so the first... Whoa, we just lost electricity. Okay. Okay, so the first type of traction we're going to talk about is going to be medium hard terrain, which is the best conditions you could wish for as a dirt bike rider. And that is when the dirt is soft enough for the knobs to sink into the dirt and grip with the knobs, okay? So the, the knobs are creating traction and a connection to the track by sinking into the dirt, okay? So that wouldn't be possible with a slick tire. So that's why we have knobs on, by the way, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and the way you optimize traction in this case is by having the correct knob spacing and length of the knobs and also uh, the correct hardness of rubber material because if the rubber is too soft the knobs are gonna bend when you accelerate so it has to be pretty hard ma rubber material for creating a good drive in these conditions um, and also the knobs should not be spaced too close together because then the the dirt is gonna st stay stuck and clock the tire so it also has to have enough space between the knobs so it can unclock when you're riding so the dirt will fly out of the tire and not get stuck in there. So there's a couple of different variables that the manufacturers have to balance in order to create the best tire with these variables, okay? And of course, no track conditions are exactly the same. So some of these variables are also special suited to certain types of tracks. Okay, so the second type of traction is fundamentally different. On hard terrain, the tire traction is different because the knobs cannot penetrate through the dirt. So it's basically just making contact with the rubber surface. And to create a good traction, in this case, you need to have a soft rubber material. Because if you zoom in, like to the microscopic level, you need the rubber to deform, to create the same shape as the microscopic shape of the dirt surface or whatever surface or rocky surface or whatever surface you're riding on. So down here you see the hard terrain surface and this is basically one knobby that I've been drawing here. So when the material is soft enough, uh, the rubber material is soft enough, it will deform and basically create like a hundred small knobbies, you could say, to create a connection with the dirt. And then when you accelerate, it will stay connected and trends for the force of acceleration from the tire and create forward motion. Okay, so I call this a microscopic rubber deformation. So this is a different principle than the knobby connection because basically this knobby tire could be made of um, a metal, like it doesn't have to be rubber, it would still create that knobby connection with the dirt because it's the dirt that deforms here. In this case, it's the rubber that deforms and creates traction that way. Okay, and if you zoom in here, um, you will conclude usually that softer rubber is better traction. 
But again, it's only to some degree you have to balance it to not have too much deformation. So the knobs bend too much, you know, so this is a balancing act. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do our little scientific measurement here using a digital caliper that has a little one by two millimeter square measurement point at the bottom that we can then apply to a tire and then measure the level of deformation with very high accuracy. And we're going to do that by applying a water bottle to this point where my index finger is to have a two kilo pressure into the tire. And of course we're going to use the same water bottle for both measurements so we have an objectively correct result. So let's start with the Dunlop, which is a soft terrain to medium terrain tire. So technically this should be a harder rubber compound than the IRC VX40 that we're going to measure afterwards. So here, first result is 0 0.8 millimeters of deformation per 2 kilos per 2 square millimeters of pressure. And yes, if you have actually studied physics, you will notice that I could also just write it as kilos per square millimeters directly. But I think the world has been confused enough in the last couple of years with incomplete data on TV. So instead, I will just thank Elon Musk for buying Twitter so he can give a platform for freedom of speech and less censorship. Because as the Twitter files show, in the last two years, leading scientists such as professors of Stanford, Harvard and Oxford universities had been offering much better solutions to the problems we were facing. And together with thousands of other academics, they signed the Great Barrington Declaration. But they were kept quiet by Uncle Twitter and all the other social media and media. But thanks to Elon Musk, who is not only surrounded by the smartest people in the world, but can also engineer a reusable rocket that can land again and seize the values of human rights, freedom of speech and democracy, which is not rocket science, by the way. Now we can have hope again for a great future with lots of fun writing and stuff. Now back to the measurements. So here you see we got a one millimeter deformation on the softer IRC VX40 tire. So as expected, the hard terrain rubber tire is made of a softer compound, which is to be exact around 25% softer than the Geomax MX33 tire from Dunlop. So you can also see here the knobs they bend quite easy. Um, you could feel it better if you like were there in person touching the tire. You could compare them and you can actually feel that the rubber is stiffer on the MX-33 tire. So yeah, that was a fun little measurement. Now the last type of terrain we're going to talk about is soft terrain tire. And um, again, this is fundamentally a different principle that is used to create drive. It's not even traction we're talking about here, because in soft terrain like sand or very loose dirt or mud, the way you're creating drive forward is by scooping material and thrusting it backwards. So it's not real traction. So I've made a drawing here of some long knobbies and some dirt that's or sand that's being shot backwards. Okay, so that's a new case. You've probably also heard about scoop tires or pedal tires. So that's why I call this type of traction for scooping. It's not real traction, it's scooping dirt or sand backwards, okay? So in this case, you get better traction the longer the knob is you have or the bigger scooping um, shape you have. Like So the size of the knob is, both in length and width, creates a scoop. And the bigger the scoop, the better drive and the more scoops you have on the tire, to some degree again. If you have too many scoops, you will have clocking, so it cannot unclock. So that's why you see... Oh, here we got the electricity back. <laughs> okay. So that's why you see uh, scoop tires have uh, also a decent distance between the scoops. Okay. So yeah, that was basically a scientific quick walkthrough of the three different types of traction that we use for dirt bike riding. If you liked the video, give it a like, share it with a friend and make sure you're subscribed for more cool videos where we talk about riding technique and also fitness and nutrition and a little bit of science in between. So see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.
If you want to learn more tools and techniques and habits that can improve your life quality and performance and well-being overall, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like tropical island holidays, visit fitcamp5.com for my two-time TripAdvisor award-winning training camp where we train fitness and action sports together while learning to live a healthy lifestyle and maybe most importantly, have fun at the same time. And if you're really serious about improving yourself, you should definitely check out my full online courses where I share step-by-step -step programs on how I develop my own routines over the last 12 years as a CEO working in four different countries while being a successful competitive athlete with more than 20 years of experience in fitness and nutrition. Check the link in the description for that. And in any case, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Be awesome. Believe in yourself. And see you on the next one.